What's up, everybody? It's Greg Birch with Delta Financial, and this is the Be The Difference podcast. This podcast is all about making you a better person in your life and in your business with coaching on sales, leadership, mindset, marketing, everything under the sun when it comes to being an entrepreneur, and we bring home guest speakers. Today, I've got the honor and pleasure of welcoming Miss Danielle Matthews. Danielle, thank you so much for coming on board. How are you? I'm fantastic, Greg. It's good to be here. Awesome. Awesome. It's good to have you. I think this is going to be a great conversation. I'm actually super excited. And just so the audience knows who Daniel is, let me go and introduce her real quick. Uh, at the age of 23, Daniel was hit by a drunk driver and sustained a life altering injury to her brain. The medical world said that there was no hope of recovery and told her to accept this life as her new normal. Although her body was physically impaired, her spirit was strong and she refused to believe that their diagnoses. Her mind was determined to recover, and she did. Through the power of what she refers to as mind control, she attracted the mindset techniques and exact quantum healing technologies needed to fully recover. She has since built an international business, authored an ebook called Mind Control, and shares her life altering experience with countless people around the globe. That is phenomenal. I have a feeling we're going to get into some metaphysical science here, <laughs> and I'm, that excites me deeply. So uh, that is my world. So I, uh, I'll love to go there with you. Yeah. That's, uh, I always, so I, I feel like I've been having more and more of these conversations on my podcast. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, every, and it happened, no joke. I don't know if you've ever read the book, um, uh, the surrender experiment by Michael Singer. I, I live like an hour from Mickey Singer's temple of the universe. I read really three of his books. Oh yeah. That is, <laughs> I adore him. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. So I'm literally finishing the book right now. I'm at the end of the oh, book right now. Okay. So I started reading it. I don't know, maybe like a week and a half ago. And ever mm -hmm. since and I, just, I, I literally just got into, I just got into meditation because of it. Cause I was like, I've dabbled in meditation and I've done it here and there. Like I've done like guided meditations on YouTube. I did, I, I did Tony Robbins quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, never consistent though, right? right? And just reading the way that he describes his experience when he first started meditating and how it and, and how he was able to like take that and use it as a leap to all these different things that you know the that led him down to the surrender experiment as he called it. I was like, man, there's something to this meditation thing. I got to get into it. <laughs> there really is. <laughs> so, so I started doing it daily. So now I do it daily. And I'm actually, I'm doing the um, Jose Silva method. Okay, yep. And um, that's what I'm training on right now through through Mind Valley or whatever. Nice. But ever since I started reading that book, I kid you not, I've had, the, you're like probably my fifth <laughs> guest that's come on that's talked about metaphysics that's talked about manifestation law of attraction stuff like that so i'm just like this excites me deeply <laughs> that way i think as like you meet anybody in sales entrepreneurs people at the top of their game like you you bump into this like there is something when you get into that space you realize there's something beyond you yeah. that is in action that's causing things to unfold it's opening doors it's making connections like you attracted me into your world as much as I attracted you into mine. Yeah. And when you start to like dabble with meditation and you start to get into like, you know, the way these universal laws and principles, it's kind of like with gravity, you know, once you understand the principles of gravity, you know, we could fly, we could, we could use them for our benefit. It's mm -hmm. like, if you don't understand the way that this universe works and the way that our mind works and how our thoughts impact the world around us and that we actually create the world from the inside out, not the outside in, as mm -hmm. most people do, uh, that's when you start to get liberated because all of a sudden, like, you get to see, like, oh, I've got control. Like, the law of vibration is really the primary law, law of attraction, secondary. And it's like, oh, the vibrational state I hold is what attracts things in. And meditation, it raises your vibration. It also helps release things that are holding you down. And so it's just this, like, beautiful inner practice that you can do that will shift your outside world in ways that like, just get ready, Greg. <laughs> it, is, it is phenomenal. What opens up. Yeah. It's, and it has been honestly, like, um, one of the things that, that, and the Jose Silva method is, um, now I'm at the point, I'm, I think I'm like on the third week or so, but, um, you have to start writing out a journal of like magic that you've witnessed, mm. you know, like things that you've witnessed in the day that is kind of like, just kind of randomly happened that you're like, huh, that's interesting. Like, 
And so I've started writing out my journal every morning. I like, I'll, I'll do my meditation in the morning and then I'll do prayer and then I'll, I'll do my journal and I'll write what magic I witnessed the previous day. Right. And so, um, like for instance, I have, I, <laughs> which is complete side note, but I have this, I have a specific contract I'm trying to get with a specific carrier mm -hmm. that, is uh, a brand new carrier for us like it's brand new right and 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 i've been on i've been waiting for it for like a month like i was told back in january i was getting it right and i'm like dude i want to write i want to i want to test this business i want to test this specific products we have we have all these proprietary products that we get through our parent organization quality uh -huh. and and um there's a new product that's like unbelievable and so in terms of life insurance which is you're like not interesting at all but <laughs> but uh i mean it needs to be interesting for people <laughs> people need to pay attention to <laughs> so so i've been waiting for this for for months 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 and so i literally one of the things is a three scenes technique that you have to go through and like imagine something that you want to have happen and i was like i need to be able to write business with that i kid you not I, I'm not even shitting you. I did the three scenes technique. And then the guy, the guy that we've been trying to contact to get it, he contacted my VP of operations. He's like, Hey, good news. It's coming out. Hey, you guys should see it literally this next week. Like by the, definitely by the end of the week, you're having it. Um, you should even see it by the early next week. And that was literally on Friday. I love it. And That's I was like, there's, there's something about this. <laughs> <laughs> where, where's anyone that has success in life like they they eventually run into this like they start seeing like wait a second like this isn't coincidental you know like i created it and the clearer yeah. you get and if you think in pictures and feeling and like what conversations are you having with these guys you know what does your day-to-day -day operations look like with them like be in that space you know what are, what are your meetings like what time of day do you have the meeting like when you're totally in the energy space of like oh it's done like it's already here that's when it mm -hmm. comes in because the future is now this is what people don't get yeah. you know they spend a lot of their time and energy and life force like worrying about the past and you know what they should have done differently what happened being angry about it you know holding on to grudges and it causes them to not be fully present but they also spend a lot of energy like in anxiety about the future but yes the space we're holding now. So if you've got you've got depression about the past or anxiety about the future, like that energy is in you right now, and it's what's seeding what's going to happen next because you're attracting in the vibration that you are. So you got to like shake it off. You got to learn to be fully present in the moment and go, look, I'm going to live my future now. <laughs> like mm -hmm. this is what I want right now. Like I have a picture. Let me show you. Like this is an image of me earning a certain reward in the work that I do, and like. I wrote a statement, you know, I'm so happy and grateful now that, and I have this on my desk because I show up as that person, like million dollar earner, Danielle, how does she have a conversation? What questions does she ask? How does she have a conversation with a, a potential client? How does she close? How does she follow up? Like, what does that look like? Because mm. Danielle today isn't the million dollar earner, but if I bring her into today's space, million dollar Danielle is you. <laughs> Like that inevitably happens. And it's been amazing the shift in people that are now coming into my world. Mm -hmm. As soon as I printed that out, put it there, and I just look at it and I get in that energy space before any call. And so I attract in people that are looking for someone that can lead them to earn a million dollars. Like that's the conversation we're having. And it's just like, it's an inner trick. Like you got to do it inside of you. <laughs> yes. It's amazing once you tap in. Yeah. So one of the things that I've always, talk to my my sales force about and i'm pretty sure that a lot of them don't do it because they probably think it's stupid mm -hmm. but i and i like another I, I shit you not i'm not even kidding um when i was first in insurance one of the hardest things to do is get on the phones and dial leads and set your appointments like prospecting right yep. and um it's like that it's like that phone gets it's like a hundred pounds so, <laughs> yeah. that's so heavy i can't do it oh netflix is right there <laughs> like, <laughs> and so uh one of the things that i did is i would i was watching all this content to try to get in the right headspace i was mm -hmm. watching all these videos and one of the things that i watched was this video that talked about um that talked about affirmations and then another one that talked about um standing in power poses before you have to like prospect because it puts you it raises your testosterone it it actually helps to like fire off more centers in your brain makes you think quicker etc and so i was like well i'm gonna print out all of my leads and then 
I'm going to stand in the mirror for five minutes before I start dialing. I'm going to force myself to do it. And I'm going to hold my leads up. And I'm going to stand in the Superman pose, you know, and I'm going to hold my leads up. And I'm just going to say affirmations about how I'm going to help every single one of these clients. I'm the best person to help them. And everyone's going to answer the phone. Everyone's going to set appointments with me. And I'm going to be the best possible advisor. Let's say this over and over again for five minutes, right? To get like this positive energy to get raise my testosterone and then and what i felt what i found is that days i did that and so i did, i did it for a long time very consistently and then i stopped doing it because i got so like, why'd you stop <laughs> and what i found was that the days that i did it versus the days i didn't do it more people answered mm -hmm. more people were positive mm -hmm. it was like they were feeding off of my energy right but then days I didn't do it, I would have like terrible dial days. I'd be like, man, what the hell's going on? And it's like, no, it's bad leads. It's this, that, the other. And it's like, no. And finally, one day I was like, I didn't, I didn't do it for like three weeks in a row. I was like, I didn't, I didn't stand in the mirror. Like I stopped doing it. And so I went back to doing it and all of a sudden shut up Yeah. again. And so I never thought about it in the sense of like, I was changing my vibrational energy. Oh. That's which I is. was like to, talking to you now, I'm realizing I'm changing my vibrational energy. And that's why I'm attracting mm -hmm. the right people to answer the phone, which can also tell that, which they hundred percent can tell positivity over the phone. Right. That's why I tell people smile when you're on the phone and stuff like that. But it, it's now I, I was thought I was like, well, I'm, you're raising your testosterone. It's like all oh, this like energy patterns, stuff like that. I never thought about the vibration, but now that you say it, that makes so much more sense. And I'm, and I, I got, I really got to start pushing agents to do it more often because it's, <laughs> I tell you, it works. It does work. It totally works. And like the energy that you hold, like everything's energy. You get down, if we talk about like the quantum physics of the world, like when you get down to what we really are, we're just energy. Everything is just the exchange of electrons. And when you, when you, you can shift and change your frequency and it's like, depending, I always think about it like a radio station. Like you can be dialed into country music. It's a certain mm -hmm. frequency, you know, and you're going to get certain music coming to you. But if you want rap music or you want, you know, salsa music, you got to change the dial. And so in sales, you know, if you're getting, say, I love sales because to me, it's about, it is like the perfect personal growth, like journey. If you want to embrace growth, like get mm -hmm. into sales. Because you have to change you, your business, your, you know, ability to sell and the, the book of sales you have, it is going to be a direct reflection of you, like the image you hold of yourself in your mind and the vibration that you're holding. And it's like some people in sales, they shoot up, maybe they get lucky, something happens, but it will always settle out to the exact level of the, the vibration you hold, right? Which mm. is your self image, your inner, your inner world. Mm. And once you can master that, like that's everything. And that's where it's interesting because I, I never thought I'm a biologist. Okay. This is my background, biology, science. <laughs> and then I suffered the brain injury, like you mentioned, and I was stuck alone with my thoughts. Like I couldn't work. I lost my job because I couldn't focus for more than 10 minutes. Couldn't handle light noise. Couldn't have a conversation. Like it was just like, you know, I was just in bed with myself. Yeah. And I don't think enough people ever, ever stop and listen to their mind listen to their thoughts because I mean, a lot of people are really intense with themselves and their thoughts aren't very pleasant. So they do what they can to ignore them. But if you actually sit with them, like the way I, I believe life is happening. Oh, we still there. Yeah, we're still here. Okay. It paused uh, for a second. You said the way I believe life, the way I believe life is hat and then it's paused. Oh, okay. Well, so the way life's happening <laughs> is that the people, the circumstances for me, my brain injury, uh, these things are happening to trigger us and we get it all wrong. Like the way we look at the world is we react to the world and we get angry. This shouldn't have happened. This shouldn't have, I didn't deserve this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, we get angry at the person you caused me to feel this way. How dare you treat me that way? Why was this person so disrespectful on the phone? How come they set an appointment for me? I drove an hour. They didn't even show up. How rude. Like we get all these inner reactions to, mm -hmm. to life. Mm -hmm. And I now know for a fact that life is actually unfolding as an irritation for us to realize what we're holding on to, like these beliefs and thought patterns that are actually jading. And, and I talk about in my ebook, Heather, it's like you got sunglasses on, like you're not actually looking at the situation for what it is. You're looking through the lens of maybe, you know, um, it's a very self-centered lens. Very self-centered. It's, it's and very much about us and our world and our life. Like, Absolutely. and how it makes you feel right. Like, well, I'm not loved or they don't listen to me or I'm not appreciated or how dare they try and control me? Like whatever. Everyone's got their own stuff.
-hmm. The moment you sit with your thoughts and rather than reacting to the person that's just ticked you off, but you actually go, wait, why am I responding like that? Where the heck is this chatter coming from? You know, and you realize, oh my God, I have some deep seated thing that's stuck in here from childhood, from a relationship, from something. And when you can start clearing that, especially as an entrepreneur, especially in sales, you are going to then be so clear in your mind because you'll be so present. You're not going to have all this chatter because mm. you dealt with it. That's so good. Know? It's so good. And That's so good. <laughs> when you when you deal with all that stuff, it also shifts your vibration because a lot of these beliefs are subconscious and they're subconsciously holding us in a certain vibrational pattern. And so if you want to know, you know, what vibration you're holding, just look at your results. What's happening in your life? Yeah complete indicator of what's going on inside. And I use meditation. I use um, a technique called yoga nidra, which is guided meditation that puts an intention when you're down, you know, in the, in the meditative state. And I love that because then it's like, I think about it like inception, you know, when you're in the meditative state, it's like things become like water, you know, your conscious mind, when we're awake, it's frozen, like stuff's just locked in, but in the meditative state, it's malleable. So you can put this new intention in there, this new way of being, I, I love the intention. I am open and patient. You know, because I don't know why life's unfolding the way it is. I'm going to be patient as I see what, it, you know, what's happening. I'm going to release my expectations of how I think it should happen because I have witnessed now that life, it puts me on detours. It puts me on paths because that's where I need to be going. My mind thinks one thing, but actually it's something else. <laughs> and so I've just released to that now. And when you do that in the meditative state, you now come into your conscious mind again. It's, it's locked in and it's a, it's an amazing practice to have. And I think if more and more people do the inner work, like if you want your sales to take off, you got to work through your own junk. That's it. The people that are doing well, it's just because they've worked through their own stuff and they're able to, to sort out their mind so that they can stay in a high vibration and they can not be phased by the objections and the BS and all the emotional stuff that we run into in other people. Because it's a people business. We're dealing with people. And yeah. they're the best part and they're the worst part. That's for sure. That's, I've had, like I said, uh, I've had, quite a few people that have come on and talked about this recently nobody has explained it so eloquently wow. as you just did in terms of like especially comparing it to sales and mm. the nest and i i agree a thousand percent in terms of making sure that you that you are working on yourself and unpacking a lot of the damage um, a great book that talks about this and like the damage that we, that we hold and we don't even realize is the four agreements oh, yeah. by mm -hmm. uh, Miguel Ruiz. Yeah. Um, I think Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, it's a fantastic book. Any, everyone should read it. I hundred percent, like everybody should read that book, but you realize that all these different beliefs about yourself, about the world, about all these things that they are like these laws that we live by and they were not created by us. They were imposed upon us. Mm -hmm. And it's what's actually like holding us in this state. And sometimes there's people that are literally living in hell on earth within their mind yes. because of the pain of the past and they won't let go. And they don't even realize that that's what's happening. Like there's no conscious like realization that like I'm keeping myself here. Like I have the key of like, it's like being a prisoner and you have the keys. Yeah. And, you're and, just you're, like, and you're just like, oh, I'm a prisoner. Like, oh. <laughs> And here's the crazy thing, Rick, is like the challenges and obstacles that are happening are meant to be like, it's like you're banging into a wall because the wall's trying to wake you up to say, hey, you've got the key. Like, hello, unlock yeah. it. Like, and it gets louder and louder and louder. Like the challenges get bigger. The intensity gets into it because it's trying to wake you up, it's trying to wake you up to say, hello, you've got some potential in here. Yeah. You know, I talk a lot about a concept called post-traumatic growth. I think so many people shine light on PTSD and I'm not minimizing that at all. I went through that as well after my accident and had to, you know, go to therapy and, and work through that. But a lot of trauma survivors, whether it's, they've been through a natural disaster, they've been through combat. Um, they've, you know, lost a loved one unexpectedly. They've lost their health. Their body now doesn't function like it used to, like me. They've been through this trauma and a lot of people get stuck in it, but there are trauma survivors that will tell you, no, 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 that was the propulsion. Like that is what, it, it just broke me down to the point that I realized who I really was, what was truly important in life. You know, it taught me how to be present, how to be grateful for today because tomorrow might not be here. And they use that as this like inner 
fire that gets lit that takes them on a new journey to whatever their purpose is for you, right? It's like the life insurance space. For me, it's been the network marketing space and working with the technology that changed my health that now I've gotten to change a lot of others. And, you know, I've watched, it's like time and time and time again, you look at a lot of very successful people. They've been through the ringer. I mean, the amount of traumas, the amount of things that like the average person would look at them and they would, they would just curl up into a ball. How could you ever get past something like that? But these people used it the way it was supposed to be used, which was a catalyst mm -hmm. to go, okay, <laughs> I need to, I need to take some ownership of my emotions here. I need to get myself in a strong mental space. I need to realize I'm the master here internally, no matter what's going on externally. And it's beautiful when you can use intense situations, traumas, obstacles, challenges, it doesn't have to be as, as intense as, you know, going into combat or, you know, losing your health, but the little things even use them as the catalyst, as the spark that makes you act differently, you know, mm -hmm. makes you grow, right? They say you grow through what you go through. <laughs> I've got a friend of mine. I love his music. He, um, he writes super inspirational lyrics. And then he just, he taught himself how to play guitar and like he, he sings to them. But one of his songs talks about, um, these mountains that you carry on your back, you were only supposed to climb. And I just think it's like such a beautiful visual because so many people keep their baggage with them and it's just like weighing them down. And when it comes to being an entrepreneur, stepping out on your own, like you have, you can't hold that. Like you won't make it because of the amount of like self drive and motivation. And like, you got to keep standing in the mirror. You got to keep doing these things for yourself every day. If you're weighed down by all this stuff from your past, like you're not going to, it's going to get too heavy. You got to learn that like, no, that stuff just made you stronger. Like now it's like going to the gym. Like we see it at the gym. Yeah. I go down and I, you know, I lift weights and I continually get higher, you know, stronger weights or I'm doing more reps, whatever it is, because we know that that intensity breaks down the muscle and it gets stronger. But somehow we like miss the lesson when they said, you know, Hey, life's that way too. Your mental, emotional, spiritual strength is only going to get bigger if you go through challenges. So run towards them, push yourself. When you get scared, lean into it. Like they say the magic happens outside the comfort zone. Well, why? Because you had to force yourself through this like terror barrier and then realize, oh, I am strong. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a big deal. Oh, one, two, three, dial, right? They didn't kill me on the other end of the phone. I'm in no different situation than I was before, right? I either learned something or I earned something. Like that's, that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. And, and to, to, for, for everyone listening, uh, I mean, go back, you guys got to go back and listen to this again, because this is really, really good. Um, one of the things that I want to, I want to highlight is that it doesn't, there is no like a uh, threshold in terms of what trauma you must go through that could potentially change you and what isn't enough. Right. Um, it could be, it could be a breakup. Right? Yeah. It could be an emotional trauma that you thought this person was the love of your life, right? And you're like, and it, and it, guess what? That sucks just as bad sometimes as losing somebody because it almost is like you lost somebody out of your life, like they're gone, right? Especially depending upon the great breakup, you may never see that person ever again. You don't even know what happened to them. Like that's the same as losing somebody <laughs> for, for all intents and purposes, right? And so, that could be something. And, and when it comes to emotional drama or emotional, emotional pain, emotional trauma, emotional pain, there is no way around it. There's no way to skirt it. There's no way to avoid it. You can only go through it because if you try to avoid it, what's going to happen is it's going to stay there. It's going to be that mountain on your back. It's yeah. going to stay there and you're going to take it to the next relationship and the next relationship. Then you're going to keep yeah. doing it over and over again. And then you're gonna wonder why, like, why do I keep having these terrible relationships? <laughs> Probably because you're not working on yourself. <laughs> Let's just, you know. There's a, uh, there's a book, put this on your neck. Well, you should read all of Mickey Singer's books. Now that you've okay. done Surrender Experiment, Untethered Soul, oh my Lord, so good, Living Untethered. Uh, but I just read one and it was like, I was done in like a day. I mean, I couldn't put this thing down. It's called Mutant Message Down Under. Super bizarre name for a book. But, this woman, she went with the uh, an Aboriginal tribe in Australia, and she ends up, I won't tell all the circumstances, she ends up going on like this, um, like four months out in the wilderness with them. And she's learning their cultures and their customs. And at one point, you know, they're going through the desert and like, she's just kind of following the leader. At one, at one point, eventually they say, it's now your turn to lead. And she said that in their culture, they believe, you know, sometimes it's fine to be at the end of the line and just follow the, you know, the herd. And sometimes it's good to be in the middle of the pack 
worked on yourself a little bit, you know, kind of going, contributing a little. But one day you have to lead. Like there will always be the day that's test day. And when the test day comes, nobody else can help you. It's yours. But that whole time that you've been in line, you've been learning all the skills you need, but now it's time to apply them. And so many people like the challenge, the intensity is like that's test day. But you've got what it takes. You know, <laughs> you absolutely have what it takes to to overcome it. There's a woman in my industry in network marketing, top in the world. Her name's Jessie Lee Ward. She just got diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. She's my age. She's like 33. And I just thought it's test day for her, you know, and I've watched her just over the last week going through this. And she's like, cancer should have picked a weaker vessel. Like it is not getting through this one. <laughs> you know? And she just, she's coming at it, applying all the stuff she, she learned in sales. How do you become number one in any industry? Well, because you, you work on yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and now she's got that, that she can now take that skill set and apply it over here. I remember when I was going through uh, my my injury, I, I sought out therapy and I think people should, like if you need help, get help. And I'll never forget my therapist said to me, it's like the first year after my brain injury, I had severe depression, anxiety, PTSD. It was just a very hard time. And he said to me, Danielle, you are at the end of this going to have such a high emotional intelligence. He said, your compassion for other people is gonna go up. If you decide to be a mother, you'll be an incredible mother incredible partner. You'll be a better daughter, a better friend. And I really hung to that because, you know, at the time I was thinking about all the things I couldn't do. I had friends getting PhDs, literally getting MBAs from, from Harvard, from Yale, like I, <laughs> becoming doctors. I had a very, you know, high achieving friend group. And I'm sitting here watching that and I can't even like, you know, spend 10 minutes on the internet doing something because I get completely overwhelmed. I didn't know what my future would be. But I remember holding on to that and thinking, Okay, that's something like I'm not going to have a diploma at the end of this, but that's something and that is going to come with me no matter what. And now, because of that, I think that's why I'm really good at my job at what I do at this business, because I can connect with people's hearts like that. You know, I, because I'm so clear on my own and I'm so in, in alignment with myself because of all of this. And I have such compassion for like the way other people I know, like how their mind is getting in their way. Like when I get objections, right? Let's talk about that for a minute. We all get them. And like, I just look at it as like, oh, there are their sunglasses. Like I used to have those sunglasses too. Let me get creative in how I can like take them off. I'm not going to get offended by them. I'm not going to take this personally. It has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it's their stuff. And so how do I help somebody navigate around their own stuff? Well, I kind of, you know, ask questions and get them to maybe reflect a little. This is such a great way to reframe your perspective when it comes to objections. It's like, oh, they're just wearing the sunglasses. You just got to, because it, it, it completely changes it. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've seen agents that'll be like, well, you know, they'll, they'll react to an objection and they'll just be like, oh, well, you know, you will, and you're just like freaking out. Yeah. It's like, calm down. It's just a conversation. They see it as a conversation piece, you know. Yeah. But technically, it's most times it's not really an objection. The only real objection I've ever seen is like, I'm not giving you my social or I'm not giving yeah. you my bank information. That's an objection. Yeah. But when they're like, Man, I really gotta think about it. Okay, well, let's talk about that. This is a that's a conversation piece. Exactly. Right? It's like, and the first objection usually isn't the real one. And the more you ask, it's just like they're processing. Yeah. You know, and it's like you process too. think about before you make a decision, what are all the things you think? You don't automatically just go. Yes. I mean, some people do. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people are very analytical. Right. That's why you got to know the different personality types. You know what questions to ask, what type of personality. Like, There's so much you can get into. But what I have found is if you're just really present and you I look at it as like a game now when I'm on with somebody and I am having this like back and forth. Like, it's so fun for me because I'm like, mm. OK. They're totally limiting themselves. And I know, like, I know that I know that I know that if I can get through to them, I can change their life. Like, I know that. And so I hold that energy space. Like, I, I hold that. And I think, how can I get them to see what I see? What's in their way? Okay. And my job is just, okay, remove those. Okay, remove those. <laughs> okay. Oh, now you see it. Yes. Okay, now here we go. And it's, it's beautiful. And the only way you get good at that is by doing it. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've put my foot in my mouth. You know, when I first started uh, in, in network marketing and, and sharing this product that I share, I Googled networking. And so first thing that came up was this like BNI group, my local chamber of commerce. And I, Greg, am like <laughs> very introverted. So <laughs> the idea of like going to a space and having to talk to people is like, 
no way. <laughs> but I knew that I was meant to share this. Like my soul was telling me, Danielle, like your life literally, you got your health back because of this. You were meant to help other people get their health back. So the purpose was bigger than my own, you know, mind. And I had learned to like master my thoughts. Like, okay, you go over here. We're going to do this anyway. We're not going to die. And uh, I would just go in and I talk to people and it's like, everybody else is feeling the same way, right? You've got all these people that are also having their own inner blah, blah, blah. So just go be the nice person, right? Act like you're the host of the party and like chit chat and whatever, make it easy. Uh, and <laughs> when you can do that, you just, you start to see. And like, I, I don't know, now that I've been doing this for years, when I go to events and I see people really struggling, you know, I, I, like you, you visually see it on them, go over there and be super nice to people. You know, yeah. and like sometimes like that connection, that's a bond that person's going to have with you forever. And if they end up networking in the community a lot, they're always going to remember you. You know, they're always going to refer people to you because they're like, Danielle really helped me. Like she met me as a human. You know, so many people, they go into a networking situation. They go into stuff like with, it's all about them. Like drop it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can worry about you in the morning when you're meditating, when you're visualizing. That's you time. And then the rest of the day, you just serve. Whoever's coming in front of you serve them, whatever's best for them. And just trust that, you know, networking is like this crazy convoluted. So is sales. It's like, it's not a straight A to B. <laughs> yeah. We go through a journey to get where we're going. But that's Absolutely. The best. And I noticed, I noticed that when I started working on myself and I started having more self, like, and mine was more like, taking extreme accountability just being like dope this is my fault and i could have done better i'm gonna take to take responsibility for my actions right yeah. and really like take having those real long hard looks in the mirror and being like man i messed up on this 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 and this i can do better and just yeah. being really like i guess chat like hard on myself but in a way that like i wanted to grow you mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. And when I started doing that and I started to focus more on other people and I started focusing on like the bigger picture and not just like me getting a sale or what commission I was going to make, but really like, I want to be the best advisor I can be with every single person I sit with. And I want to put them in the best position, even if it's not with one of my products. And that was the key. Even if it's something else that I can't, that I can't sell them. Yeah. That's when it changed for me. That's when I started to see massive growth and massive sales and more people coming be like dude what are you doing like you seem different right <laughs> and and yeah. i tell you like you're absolutely right you're absolutely right that sales is that it's that one arena or that one industry that you have to work on yourself you have to be in personal development in order to if you want to be successful sustain success yeah. for the long term and be and you know actually stay in sales and not just like attempted or tried and then get weeded out like a lot of people do it's because they're not willing to work on themselves exactly i always tell my team because i coach and train a team now and it's like i tell them i say there's a day you're going to have to look yourself in the mirror and you're going to be asking yourself is this worth it you know can i do this and i said i can't answer that day for you because the masses don't make it in network marketing and there's a reason and like you'll hear all this blah blah it's a terrible industry no it's because the industry is cheap to get into. Someone's not investing in a franchise. Someone's not putting out a bunch of money that they're like, okay, I put my savings into, you know, this franchise. I'm gonna make it work. They put 40 bucks in and they, you know, and then it's on the back end. They got to work on themselves. They got to become better. They got to learn how to take a no. They've got to learn how to uh, have somebody judge them. They've got to learn that their worth is not external. It's internal. Like they got to do all that stuff. And I always tell my team, there's a day that you look in the mirror and you're going to have to ask yourself, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to shift and change? Because you today is not going to earn 10K a month, right? Like you today needs to shift and change and grow into that person that is mm -hmm. able to do that. And uh, it's tough. I don't know about you. It sounds like you also have a team and it can be hard. Like when you go through it, like we know it's difficult. We're like, we're committed, like whatever it takes. Like that's, I can tell you and I have the whatever it takes. And it's so tough when you see the potential in somebody and then they like, they release it and they settle and they like bounce off the terror barrier and they go back to this life where they're like, I mean, they're in somebody else's dream. They're not like the star of their own movie and like they can be the star. And it's just like it's so painful to watch. And I like, especially when you see people with like a bright light that yes. you're like, and you're like, this person would be so good. Like if they could just get out of their way, man, yes. they'd be good. It'd be amazing. It's so yeah. tough to watch. And I just like, I'm super intentional, but I always tell everybody, like, I have try to create this like the right soil so that people's seeds of potential can like 
you know, take root and then grow mm. and, and in that community space. And it's like, it's amazing to watch it when it does happen too. Like when someone all of a sudden, like you see that they get it. And like, it's like, we'll talk about light in their eyes. Like light comes into their eyes. Like their soul starts to fire up and you're like, it's like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're like living again. So many people are just like stuck in fear. They're stuck in this, like just dredging through the day to day, like on this loop of just like not happy, not enjoying life. And you know, when my accident happened, I mean, I was in that loop, right? I mean, I, I went to a top university. I graduated top of my class. You know, I was kind of putting my head, go to a good school, get a good job, right? The whole thing on the ladder, make good money. And then my accident happened and I was pulled from it. And then I'm watching, you know, my friends, my family, my sister, I'm, I'm watching them and I'm like, I, I don't think they're happy. <laughs> you know, they're like just on this loop pattern doing what they're supposed to be doing. But then like come the weekend, they're not inspired about life. And now they're having to decide, do they have time to hang out with friends or do they need to go see family? And well, I can do this, you know, holiday now. Now I got a girlfriend, so I got to go be with her. Family. Like it just totally they don't have the time that they want. It's not their own. There's no time freedom. And my accident happened. I could have easily been killed. You know, yeah. like that could have been the end. I, I can't unknow that like tomorrow's not guaranteed. I did nothing wrong, right? This guy was driving drunk. He hit me. Mm -hmm. I, I was doing nothing wrong. And so I think about that often like, okay, so what am I doing today? And I want to be able to be in charge of my own time and be able to, to do those things. I'm not saying I don't work. Like I work hard, but if I wanted, I could take the day off. <laughs> you know, if somebody needed me, I don't have to ask permission. I ask permission for myself. And uh, it's it's a really empowering space to be. But I think so many people get scared. Like I got pulled from life, you know, and then it was like, I don't want to go back in. <laughs> not yeah. going back in that way. And I think a lot of people they are stuck. Like I got friends now that are watching me and they're like, Danielle, do you think I could make it as an entrepreneur? And I'm like, doesn't matter yeah. if I think you could or not. <laughs> yeah. you just got to decide. I'm like, if you make a decision to, you will. <laughs> yeah. You just commit. You just yeah. say, I'm going to make it. It's not, it's not even whether or not you, you think you'll make it. It's just, you commit to it. Period. Yeah. yeah. It's consistency. Like if there's yeah. one word that I would give any entrepreneur, I'm like, be consistent. Period. Yeah. Like if you're consistent, it'll happen. It's just, and we have to release the timeline. This is another thing in life. Going back to our medical metaphysical conversation. People don't realize that, you know, we're working with this universal force. Okay. Oh, whatever you want. Some call it God, some say the quantum field, some say, you know, source, universe. I don't care what you call it. It exists. <laughs> and, you know, we are in charge of deciding the direction we're going to go and taking action. That's our job. And then our partnership in this, it's like we start to tug on a thread. We're saying, okay, there's all these threads. I want that one. And I'm going to go this way and I'm going to act every day. I'm going to pull it towards me. But the, how long it takes to get to us is not up to us. And the way in which it comes to us is not up to us. But we get so stressed out in our own head thinking, well, it should be this way, having an expectation of this timeline like you with that, like you wanted it like this month or last month, whatever, like wasn't the right timing. And we don't know why. And I've watched it enough, like being an entrepreneur for eight years now, I've watched it enough to know like, oh, I wouldn't have been ready. Like, I had a couple join my business last year. If they had joined the year before, I wouldn't have been the leader they needed me to be because there was stuff I still had to grow through and I had to become so that when they came, I could rock and roll with them. Mm. You know, but I, the year prior, I was wanting somebody like them, but I, just, I wasn't ready yet. <laughs> yeah. And now I have that perspective and it's like, okay, like release the timeline, just get really good at your actions and be super clear on where you're going. And it happens faster. No, you're absolutely right. And people grossly, um, they overestimate how much they can do or how much they think they can do in a short amount of time. And they underestimate if you were extended out a little more, like, let's like, well, this should happen in seven months or one year. Like I should find all the success, but they don't realize that like the growth really happens in like year two, three, four. So it's like, you're going to get way past where you even think you want to go by like year three or four as an entrepreneur. You just have to get past this first, this first, uh, um, you know, difficult spot, this dry spot. There's a, there's a, and I don't remember the exact amount, but if you were to take, it's like Lake Michigan and you were to take Lake Michigan and you were to say completely emptied it, completely empty it. And it was just this big hole in the ground. Well, if every single day, 
you put in, I th- I can't remember what it was, but it's, I'm going to, I'm going to guesstimate. It's probably going to butcher it, but it's like, if you were to put in like a cup of water in every single week, you double how much you're putting in. Right. Mm-hmm. So like week two, it's like two cups week three, it's like four cups, so on and so forth. So, um, it would take you, it would take you, uh, I think 81 years or something like that to refill all of like Michigan. Now here's the key is it like the years one through 50, it still looks like it's dirt. It still doesn't look. And then like years 50 through like 70, it looks like little puddles, but year like 70 to 80 is where all the growth really happens. It's like, and it, and it, and it exponentially fills. Yeah. And so that's kind of, that's like a really good example of like, well, how entrepreneurship is. It's like, you're putting in the work, you're pulling the thread. You may not see anything. You may be like, dude, it still looks barren around here. Like, what's that? Is this worth it? Yeah. yeah you just got to keep pulling. You just can't quit. You just got to keep going, keep going, keep going and have faith in yourself and have faith in, in the work that you're doing, that it's going to reap the rewards. Yes. So. And there's two things I thought of when you were saying that I had a mentor of mine show me this graph. So he said, look, when people start out as an entrepreneur, like they're super excited, they're really into what they do, like it aligned. It's like, oh, that's my soul's purpose. And they're like up here. And then like reality sets in, they get a no. Someone doesn't see their vision. They get questioned by a loved one. Like it doesn't go the way they expect. And you end up in what he called the valley of despair, the pit of despair. And he said, Daniel, that's where most people die. Like that's where they just, they stop, they can't make it. And it usually takes about 18 months to get through that because that's where you're learning to master your mind. You're learning to overcome. You're doing all the inner work, you know? And then you start to, all of a sudden, you're more solid. Like, you had that shift. I had the shift. And, like, our conversations are different. We're serving people. We've gotten ourselves out of the way. Like, now people are attracted to us because before we were repelling them with our energy. Now we're attracting with our energy. And then it's exponential. Then it just, like, poof. Yeah. The most of you don't make it. They, you know, they give up. And I, uh, I'm i sure you've studied some of, like, Jim Rohn's stuff. He's such an yeah. amazing Man, but the law of sowing and reaping, like also this sense of like, you don't sow in the same season that you reap. Like it takes time (laughs) for something to grow, for decisions to happen, for the life circumstances to be in alignment for that person. Like you can't decide that, but you can control how many conversations you have, how many seeds you sow. Mm -hmm. And therefore, like in my business, I'm always reaping. Like I can harvest all the time because I'm sowing all the time and different people come, you know, at different times and I'm just been doing it long enough that now it's just a consistent steady flow yeah you know, you just put you, you'd put in the work for so long and that's and that's what that's what you know especially with sales it's a very similar if you if you do sales the right way if you are building a good book of business based on exceptional client experience that and you're working with your your niche like these these this is like your ideal client avatar these are the perfect people that you know that you can help and you provide them the absolute best experience so much so that they look at you and they're like man you are the best that is the best sales experience i've ever been a part of what's going to happen is that you do that so many times is that what you're doing is you're creating this branch off of another complete book of business cuz they're going to end up talking to you, talking to their friends, their family, their acquaintances, their coworkers, everyone about the exceptional experience they just had with you. Just like, yeah. like we all do that, period. Yeah. And what people don't realize is that if you put in the work now, instead of trying to just like grind and like churn and burn, but you actually spend time building relationships, you'll build a really great, sustainable and strong book of business that will feed you to where you're constantly getting in new people and you're constantly in that, in that reaping, you know, yeah. instead of having to sew all the time, because you did so much sewing in the front end. That is network marketing explained. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, that's the beauty of it. Like referrals are the lifeblood of any business. And it's like, it comes down to, are you serving the person in front of you? There's a book I have. It's a children's book. I have this on my bookcase and I love it. It's called the three questions and it's a Leo Tolstoy story. And it's like super simplified, but this kid's like trying to figure out what to do with life. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he's always asking like, well, when's the best time to do something? Who is the most important one? What's the right thing to do? And he's asking all these animals and getting all these different answers. Moral of the story is the best time to do something is now. The most important one is the one in front of you. And the thing to do is whatever is best for them. And I, the, the founder of the company that um, 
that I work with, <laughs> he shared that at the first conference I ever went to. And it like, it hit me so hard because I'm like, that's what I learned during my brain injury. I had to, I had to be present because I didn't know about my future and thinking about my past was awful. And I just, I found joy by helping the people around me, like making them smile, you know, it made me happy. And when he said that, I was like, that's it. Like, that is the secret to life. Serve those in front of you, get your own agenda out of the way. And like, everything happens. You never know. Like, if you keep showing up as you, you never know who's in the room. You never know who's overhearing a conversation. You know, you might be talking to somebody at Starbucks or whatever about it. They're not hearing you. But the person at the table next to you comes over and says, hey, I don't, I didn't need to eavesdrop, but I actually really need what, what you have. And I love the way that you explained it. Like, you just you never know. Yeah. <laughs> you absolutely never know. No, that's absolutely true. But Daniel, thank you so much for coming on and just, and usually we talk a lot about your, like your past and all that, but I feel like it, it just kind of naturally organically jumped into like everything we we're talking about when it was a great conversation. So I feel yeah. like I want to have you on again, just to kind of talk more about your actual experience and how like walking through like the, the steps that you did to, to, yeah. to heal yourself. Right. Oh, Which yeah. You didn't really break down. <laughs> And you got all the juice of what I learned, but yeah, yeah. I have to get there, which is important, I think, too, because so many people are in their own challenging things. So yeah, I, I like, I think I could talk to you forever. So I'm happy to come back. <laughs> yeah, that's that would be great. So Danielle, if anyone has any questions or they want to learn more about, uh, about you know your story, or they just want to follow you for more content or anything like that, what's the best place to follow you? Uh, Instagram. I'm over Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. And it's just my name, Danielle Matthews. Turns out there's other ones though. So you got to put an underscore at the beginning and the end, and then you'll find it. Boom. <laughs> very, very, very simple. Very easy. I love it. Yeah. And then the last question I ask all my guests before, uh, at the end of the podcast <laughs> is you have the opportunity to break bread with, sit down, learn, have a conversation with anybody, three people, any time in history. So anyone that's living or deceased, but three people, who would those three be and why? Oh my God, what a question. Okay. Well, I probably gonna be more spiritual. So I would want to sit with Gandhi. I would want to sit yeah. with Buddha and I would want to sit with Jesus. And the conversation I'm going to have is about their connection. Like it's about how they lived in such presence and power and brought it like through. And because the ripple effect of what they did is like through generations that's what I want to know how to do. You know, it's like, I, how do you live a life so far beyond your own life that decades, I mean, you know, centuries <laughs> when you're gone, conversations still happening. Like you're still showing the way that's, yeah. that's where I would be. I like it. I like all three of those and the, <laughs> and the reasoning behind them. I love it. That's fantastic. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. Hey, everybody, this was like, really, this is a really value packed episode, especially when it comes to like, the 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 physical application and the and the realistic application of working on yourself in sales network marketing but when you look at the metaphysical aspect and the vibrational patterns and the things that you put out which is something that i can attest like is is a real thing has happened in my life right and the more that it happens the more you will kind of write those things out and be like oh wow this is real <laughs> and that belief actually allows more to happen as you as it happens in your life, you write it out, it creates belief within you, which actually attracts even more like it exponentially starts to raise your vibration. So um, so I, I just need your favor. I, I need to ask a favor of all the audience. I just need you to share this content with somebody else that can also get value from it that can learn from it, maybe change their perspective, help them get through a really difficult time in order to find power within themselves to get through it and actually reach that potential to get out of that gel cell we're talking about because they do have the key every single one of us does. So share this content. That's how we grow is by word of mouth and by organic, you know, uh, warm market by all of you. So we appreciate it. it takes about 30 seconds to give a rate review, subscribe, uh, uh, share, but it means the world to Danielle and I. So this has been the, the Be The Difference podcast. I'm your host, Greg Birch. Until next time, we'll see you.